Uh, Am I? You want, my, you want my grandson to call you? No, I'll probably <laughs> just play, play with it. <laughs> <laughs> they they know how to do it. They, they do, teach, and I they should. Teach, they teach us. Are are they we looking, are we looking for computer help? Yes, of I course. was looking oh, for yes. how I can sharpen up the background I have. Everybody wow. else's is nice and crisp, and I can see their pictures. And mm -hmm. mine is just fuzz, it's like a setting on the camera. So I should be able to figure this out. Yeah, just have to get the. Yeah, it's one thing with the depth of field on it. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to uh, play what? here, and all of a sudden I may come in very clear. <laughs> okay. Well, what what type of computer are you using? Are you on a iPad, on a desktop, on a laptop? I'm on an Acer laptop. Ah. Okay. All right. And I've got to get to um, my settings. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, somewhere in there. <laughs> yep. My daughter was just trying to talk me into to getting a seven-year-old dog or a puppy. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> Seven-year-old's better. Yeah, I know be that. <laughs> I had, uh, I had for many years, 30 years, I had a show kennel of dogs, so. Oh, you are very familiar then. Yeah, I should be, but you know, you get rusty after 15 years of not having dogs. What, what, what kind of dogs were you showing? I was showing miniature schnauzers, but we also had two giant schnauzers, which I oh, loved. Okay. I would just go out of my way to get another giant schnauzer. I have a, I have a Lakeland Terrier that I got, got as a rescue dog, and yeah. it, it, it came to me listed as a miniature schnauzer. Oh. But Lakelands, Lakelands don't look anything like a miniature <laughs> schnauzer. <laughs> not at all. Not at all. Are they, I, are, they, are they hunting dogs or Lakeland Terriers hunting dogs? Oh, they're ratters. They're, they're, they're dogs ratters, that go yeah. to ground. Right, go to ground. Right. Yeah. Okay. So, how hi, lady. Well, other than looking for dogs and computer <laughs> issues, oh, things like that, How's everybody doing? Good. Oh, yeah. Fine, thank you. How are you? Good. How are you? <laughs> Good. Okay, well, I'm glad to be here. I'm glad to see all of you here. You ready to get rocking and rolling? Take a look and see what we got here? Yeah, go ahead. All yeah. right, all 10 of us. Okay. Um, okay, so we're going to start uh, jumping in there. And, well, okay. I think we are. Oh, here we go. Got to find the right page. What can I say? All right, where? Are... <laughs> That's cute. Great. That's not it. Okay. <laughs> but it's cute. <laughs> well, no, no. The one I'm looking at is not it. You know, you guys are looking at, uh, yeah, the the snow, snowball. The snow snowbirds. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna look at some snow sculpture for a little bit because somebody was busy on the internet and downloaded a bunch of pictures and sent them in. This is from Armando, okay? I like it. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's there's some great ones in there, you know? But yeah, that's, uh, yeah. That's I, thought, I thought snowbirds were those temporary residents of Florida. Yes. <laughs> in, in, they definitely are. In, yeah, these, these look like some of the temporary temporary residents who didn't get out of town <laughs> snowed. so uh, yeah ju i just found out my nephew went to florida just as it's going to be freezing all the way down to almost miami mm -hmm. and i said what Don't yeah i think that good to, sense <laughs> yeah i think it's supposed to get down to like 19 or something like in a yeah. day yeah it's crazy i guess he's he's in melbourne which is uh down below Daytona Beach. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. So uh, anyhow, um, I thought that was. You know. <laughs> that is amazing. Yeah. Somebody had a lot of fun. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. No, some of these are great. Yeah. If nothing else, <laughs> yeah, they'll make they'll make you laugh and feel good. You know that you're not there, buried in snow. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. You know. Yeah. When I looked at these, that's kind of the reaction I had. It was like. 
boy, I'm glad I'm not there. <laughs> you know, but but a lot of these are really creative. So uh, yeah. that's yeah. cute. Yeah, it is. It is. Yeah, and uh, of course the snowman making a snow angel. Yeah. yeah. Fun. So, yeah, it, it's it's good to see that people can have a little bit of you. You know, <laughs> even when they're you know snowed in. So. When you live up there, you have to get in with the program or else it's <laughs> rubber. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that that looks realistic. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's a nice rabbit. You know. Yes. <laughs> He did a good job, but you know, I mean, hey, you know, you're you're working with, you know, a, a material that is finite. It's not permanent. You know, you can be real creative with it, and then just let it kind of melt away. Evidently, this is. I think this is in Japan because I'm looking at the lettering up here, and it looks uh, Japanese. Maybe Japanese or Chinese. Could be either. Mm -hmm. really. Is, but an appropriate is, the black, is the black on his chest made with spray paint, you think? I don't know. You know, I don't know. Could be a cloth. Could be. Could be a cloth wrapped around him. It looks like it looks like something maybe yeah, like a blanket or like, you know, wrapped around him. Now mm. up here, I don't know. Look. It could be spray paint too. Mm. Sorry, you know. It's hard to say. Oh, and he's smiling. He's got a little smiley face on him. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. If you look closely, yep. <laughs> Stegosaurus. Yep, a Stegosaurus. You know, got to have one of those, right? Yeah. I was just uh, watching a video last night, and they have found dinosaurs on the north slope of Alaska that looks like they lived there. Oh, they did. Wow. Yeah. No, the uh, no, there were huge herds of dinosaurs yeah. up in Alaska. Yeah, they, yeah gave but, a, they gave him a new name, like Gigantosaurus or something. This one has been the newspaper taking care of his business. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, yeah. I still think he's cold. He, she, it. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I wouldn't want to be out, you know, in a now house on a frozen day like that. Now, Char, do you consider that art? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah why mm. would it not be art? You know, not not all art is permanent. Yeah. Where you know, is this? Is it in a it looks like houses are behind it. This is outhouse. Yeah. Well, yeah. If somebody made it. Out, it looks like yeah, maybe it could be like a public building or something or a school <laughs> back there, <laughs> a church. You know. But yeah, somebody had a great time. Uh, you know, nobody knows who these guys are, right? Logic. Minions. Yeah, little minions. minions. Yeah. Minions. You know, and uh getting back to dinosaurs. So oh. <laughs> that's clever. Yeah. Really clever. Yeah. Now how did they make it stick? I was gonna ask the same thing. Well it would have to be it would have to be kind of cold, you know. And if it's cold enough, the brick is cold enough, then the snow would probably stick to it if they packed it on there. Um you know, same thing with the tree. <laughs> People have way too much time on their hands. <laughs> In the cold weather. Yep. Oh, dear. Yep. That's the thinker. Yep. Well, I don't think he's he's worrying, it looks like. You know, mm -hmm. Yeah. He, that's not the classic thinker pose. Um, no. Yeah, but... Yeah, this I thought this was, you, know, <laughs> you know, somebody going out, you know, the car and you know, landing on their landing on their tush. Side. Not tush, the head. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's cute. Yeah. yeah, somebody yeah, it's a, a snow snow lady or snowman pushing a a little snowman. So yeah, little stick kind of legs. <laughs> They're so clever. Yeah, they are. Yeah, I thought I thought these were. Uh, <laughs> yeah. All kinds of different expressions. And 
and uh, you know, <laughs> oh wow, I like that one. Yeah, you got a little, little bit of a sea serpent going on there. So yep. Uh, I thought, you know, out of all of them, I thought this one was really well done. You know, oh, my. oh my goodness. Rubik's Cube. Uh, yep. Yep. Ooh. And I, I, I'm guessing they had to get that snow kind of wet, you know, to get it yeah. to hold, you know, that well. That, that I, I, wonder if, I wonder if they put it on a frame. Have to put it on a frame. Oh, you mean some kind of underlying structure? structure? Possibly. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, possibly. Yeah. Yeah, that would that would yeah. stabilize it a bit. Uh, you know, somebody thinking in the snow there. <laughs> Ooh, a monster. Yeah. <laughs> well, it looks like somebody went out in the snow and uh, kind of fell in a hole. There's a oh, oh <laughs> look at that little hedgehog. Very clever. Yeah. And, you know, just using, you know, pine needles and, you know, stuff. You know. There's something <laughs> very cute for all you dog lovers. You know. <laughs> all right. So, anyway, that, that was Armando's uh contribution you know so thanks, thanks armando. armando thank you armando yes. <laughs> he brought smiles that. to our faces pardon he brought smiles to our faces yes yeah it's a nice way to start off um and then you know this is what he sent in the other day this is the the painting or the poster he was talking about mm. and in looking at it i'm not so sure it's an american artist you know, it looks more like something that would have been done um, in France around the, you know, Impressionist period or post-Impressionist. So, do you know anything more about it, Armando? No, I throw away the, paper, the piece of paper with the information. Okay. I can't find it. Okay. Yeah. I mean, in, in looking at it, it could maybe be a sergeant, you know, but mm. I'm kind of thinking it's probably, you know, somebody like Manet or Delacroix. Um, mm -hmm. I, you know, it doesn't. It doesn't look like Degas. Uh, no. Yeah, but I'll. I'll. You know. I'll dig around for a little bit and see if I can come across anything like that. Charles, is there a site on the internet where you can put up a picture and then ask who who painted this? Uh, well, you can probably post it on Facebook or something like that and get some right. responses. Right. Um, you know, is there now the other thing that's going to be kind of working against you is that this is not shot kind of straight on. It's kind of at an mm -hmm. angle. So I, I don't know if there's a site that you could post it on and, you know, have it scanned and get any information back on. So, mm -hmm. but, you know, we'll, we'll dig around. You know, it's, it's piqued my curiosity. You know, if anybody. Hello. Hi, how are you? This is Dara Forming from Passion to Care Home Care. Really? Okay. Uh, so, what was that? Uh, Charles, I see somebody taking a picture of it right below on, on the lady's uh, right arm. Oh, yeah, right here. The hand yeah. Armando. The yeah. yeah, yeah. That's, that's Armando taking a picture of it. Yeah. Did, uh, could you make it bigger down at the bottom to see if there is a signature on it? Yeah, I already have. I've blown it up. I didn't. Okay. Find, yeah. I didn't find anything actually on the painting you know there's no you know clear distinct signature you know and, and in fact this is not the whole painting this has probably been enlarged and it's just a small portion of the painting is my guess ah okay so 
because there's too many things kind of coming in and out of the frame. Um, so, so yeah, I'm not sure. Anyhow, but yeah, we'll look. We'll, we'll keep doing a little bit of search. Um, and Armando, you can look too. <laughs> but I would, yeah, I would look under the European, you know, like the Impressionist movement, because um, you're more than likely going to find it there. You know, as far as the style. So, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of thinking just looking at the dress and the interior and everything else. It's, it's probably a, a French Impressionist. It would be unlikely that it was from, you know, this mm -hmm. country. So. Isn't one of those big museums in New York? Well, That's, I remember. They, yeah. Well, you know, they own a little bit of French Impressionist work. <laughs> you know. Um, yeah, not everything in New York is American art. They have art from all over the world. You know, particularly yeah. the Met, things like that. But, you know, and that, that might be, you know, that might be a good place to start a search is look at, you know, some place like the Metropolitan or something like that and see if they have a, see if they have a catalog, you know, of, of their uh, collection and, and look through it. So, but, uh, but I'll, I'll, I'll look as well. All right, so uh, this is Bob. I mean, this is no, not, <laughs> no, Bob looks nothing like that, okay? <laughs> but this is Bob's drawing. And this is from Friday. And he took the, the model and the image that we were working from. And now this is a pastel, is this correct? Uh, no, 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 this is, uh, this is, um, it, um the what do I call it color erase from from uh prismacolor oh okay okay now, and on charcoal paper and i hate it i don't like it at all you don't like it at all. okay no and because the the, the 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 pencils seem to be very waxy okay and you can't get good clean lines uh edges uh, on it, where you know you can make all kinds of fuzzy edges, but but the the where you want clean edges, mm -hmm. uh, you can't get it from here. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, now, is it a pencil or is it kind of like a stick or a block? No, it's a pencil. It's got a it's got a little eraser on the end. Uh, okay, and and, and, it, and it's sharpened down to a point. Oh yes, oh absolutely. I mean, I've I've got an electric pencil sharpener that will, will give me a nice nice point and then I'll take some sandpaper and work on it even more. <laughs> hmm. But anyway. Well I wonder it is what it is. Yeah. Yeah, I wonder why it is that you couldn't get a clean a cleaner line with it then. Hmm. All right. Well I've never used those. And and who are they made by? A Prismacolor. Prismacolor. Ah. Okay. <coughs> yeah. I'll have to, I'll have to look into what, those. What kind of material was this? I had to step out for just a second. Uh, <coughs> the, the dry the, the erase. Or, or. I'm sorry, I missed that. Go ahead, Bob. The, uh, the, the pencils are Prismacolor uh, color erase, oh, or C-O-L-E-R-A-S-E, -E, color. Or erase, hmm. and, and basically they have a little eraser on them, and it it will erase, you know, erase it pretty clean. Yeah. Uh, how, however, I'm say it does not give you, or I'm, at least I haven't been able to get it. You know, I'm sure somebody can. Yeah. But so it, I, and it could be the paper too. I mean, it's it's Strathmore uh, gray. Oh, that's nice paper. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that that is it's pretty good paper and it's got a tooth to it, so it should take yeah. you know that medium pretty well. Um, yeah. Now let me ask you this: you know, when you close your book and stuff, does it transfer off onto the other no. side? No, no, 
Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Now, see, that's one of the reasons that I use the Prismacolor, you know, regular Prismacolor pencil, because I like to draw with it because it keeps any of your sketchbook real clean because it doesn't, you know, transfer off to the other side. And that's also why I use an electric eraser, you know, <laughs> because unless you use an electric eraser, you, you really can't erase it. Um, it's fairly permanent. And, uh, but, you know, with an electric eraser and a little bit of patience, you know, you can lift it, you know, pretty much so almost totally out of there. Uh, Where do you get that electric eraser? Pardon? It's Amazon. <laughs> Amazon? Oh. Yeah. Because I have one prismatic color. When I use it, I cannot erase with right. a normal eraser. Yeah, no, no. If, if you have, like, one of these, like a kneaded eraser, um, you're never going to get that prisma color to lift off of that. Okay. Now they have those little white pearl erasers, uh, which I just dropped mine and lost it, so I can't find it. Um, but normally, what I use when I'm using a prisma color is something like this. It's a little electric eraser. Comes with a little white eraser up here, and uh, it's battery operated, and uh, you know. You just push the button and it starts spinning. And you know, they're very they're very handy to have. And particularly if you if you lay down an area and you want to lift back to white, um, you you can do some very fine lines and very nice detail, you know, by lifting out rather than you know making a draw, you know, like a an edge or a line. So, um, well, I'm sorry you don't like those, Bob. <laughs> you know, that's uh, okay. I, I, I have lots of other opportunities. <laughs> yeah, but I'm, I mean, they, they, they kind of have, I guess, the texture of it kind of reminds me of almost like a pastel pencil, you know, or something like that. Yeah. Um, more than a prism color pencil, but okay. Um, and how, how many colors do you have? Oh, uh, let's see. There's boxes that has uh, 24 colors. Okay. So you, you've got a pretty good range of color. And, yeah. and do they, when, when you're working with them, do they mix well? Can you blend one over another? Yeah, yeah you can. You can. Okay. Huh. All right. I mean, you know, it depends upon the amount of pressure you put down, but you can, you can get a very uh, uh, loose, I guess, Mm -hmm. uh, color uh, right down to a, a, just a solid, you know, line. Really, really. And so, so you, you have a range of, of values uh, now that you can uh, achieve. Okay. Yeah. Like I said, I, you know, I don't have those, but uh, yeah, I might, I might have to try to play with them a little bit just to, you know, see what they're really like. They're not expensive. I mean, they're pretty inexpensive pencils. Yeah, usually Prismacolor is not too bad. Yeah. And then you, you've also sent in this. Now, is this the same medium or is it something different? No, this is, this is pastel. Oh, okay. All right. Beautiful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very well done. This, this, this is a, 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 um, a, a study of the uh, Frederick... No, what's his name? Um, yeah. Uh, the, Zem Zem <laughs> yeah, this guy. Okay. Yes, yes. Right. Yeah. Now, now the thing I would say to you about your, you know, in, since we have this up here anyway, um, when we're looking at the two of them, okay, is that uh, one, you could have pushed more color into the skin tone. And the other thing is you could have softened your shadows on the interior, like, you know, the back and stuff here mm -hmm. is a little bit too dark and hard. And if you worked over that and softened it a bit, then it would kind of feel more like it's, you know, a part of the body. Yeah. Cause you see how, how, uh, this sort of transition and, you know, very softly. Mm -hmm. and they, I've been practicing it. 
Yeah. The only real sharp point is really right here, you know, at the spine. And even yeah. on the outlines, uh, well, it's the spine, the back of the neck, the top of the shoulder, you know, what we call the deltoid muscle right here. Mm -hmm. right. Um, and that's really about it. Those are the only real crisp, hard lines. Everything else is softened back from that. You know, it's, it's not like there's a hard outline all the way around it. So, um, so just keep that in mind, you know, as you're, you know, as you're trying to, you know, work from another piece of artwork, you know, really look at what the artist did and, you know, do a little thinking about, okay, why did they do it and does it work? And then if it works, do it. If it doesn't work, then you might sit and think a little bit about what you might do differently. So, uh, but what I, what I liked about the, his, the original was there's so many colors in, right. in her in her skin. I mean, just yeah. greens and purples and darks right. and just. So I'm trying. To, I'm trying to work on on that kind of right. aspect. Yeah, and you and I talked about that, and that's you know that's that's the thing. When I look at his work and I look at Degas work, they're similar, but I actually like his, his right. use of color and the way that he can model form actually better than Degas, you know. To me, you know, Degas work begins to look clunky when you compare it to, to what he's doing. Mm -hmm. His name is Zindo Mandegi. Yes. Thank you. I'll yeah. let you pronounce it for me. I'll, right. I'll record that so I can play your voice over. <laughs> <laughs> I looked him up. Yeah. yeah Zendo, Mind Zendo Minnegi. Zendo yeah. Minnegi. Right. Zendo Minnegi. He has five syllables. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, he's, he was uh, Italian. And uh, yeah, I, I've, I'm well over trying to butcher his name. <laughs> so. yeah, me too. You know, but, you know, I mean, he did beautiful work. I mean, he really did. And particularly when it came to the human figure. I mean, he really knew, you know, how to build up the color and form. And, uh, you know, just really, really nicely done. And this this is all pastel. Okay. And, uh, you know, I've said this before, and I'll say it again. You know, Pastel is one of those mediums that it's just like magical. You know, it's, it's a beautiful medium to use. Uh, unfortunately, it's highly toxic, you know, and it's, it's also probably one of the most dangerous um, mediums that you can use as an artist, you know, so. Just be cautious. What does it have in it that's so bad? Is it lead? Um, lead, arsenic, no, lead cadmium, nickel, you know. Uh, All the any, bad stuff, yeah. Any kind of heavy metal right. um, or, or poison, it's got in it. about. Well, thank you for the heads up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, you don't want to be working in a room with you know, and using it and building up a lot of dust and breathing, okay? Um, now, you know, one, one of the reasons that, uh, you know, they attribute a lot of artists, particularly like the post-impressionists and impressionists. Impressionists, just a reminder, we are. Uh, anyway, one of, one of the things about them, if you, if you look at a lot of them, um, a lot of them spent a little bit of time in a sanitarium, okay? Uh, actually, quite a few of them did. And uh, one of the reasons for that is because a lot of them were being slowly uh, poisoned by cadmium. And uh, cadmium is known uh, to make you a little delusional. So, and it will eventually kill you. So, uh, you know, that's kind of what was going on with a lot of, you know, a lot of the artists around that period of time. 
Um, anyway, moving on. So we have your, your three drawings. Now is, is this with the same medium, Bob? Mm -hmm. like yeah, I think, yeah, well, part and part. I use graphite and, and, uh, and the color. And the okay. Color. All right. Um, you know, I mean, you might get it to work for you that way, but yeah. I've, I've always found that, you know, charcoal, graphite, um, you know, and Prismacolor, they, they just don't play well together. You know, it's, uh, they don't mix well. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the color, you know, by, if you put graphite down first and try to go back over the Prismacolor, the color always looks kind of murky and muddy. Uh, the same thing with charcoal. You know, it just doesn't, just doesn't play nicely. So now if you're using charcoal, using actual like pastels over it you know those seem to work really pretty well um and and they really do sort of mesh and blend together really well uh charcoal and graphite again yeah they don't really they don't really work well together because the charcoal stays really soft and the graphite you know will get a very kind of slick surface to it so uh I guess I would recommend, you know, be, be careful with the things that you want to play with and, and mixing them. Um, and in this case, not because they're dangerous, just because, you know, they, uh, you know, they have a really different look and they handle it in a really different way. So. Well, I, I'm going to try some new pastel paper. It's called Pastel Mat. Mm -hmm. And from, from the videos that I've seen, it does not create the level of dust that that uh, a lot of the really grainy, uh, heavy textured uh, pastel papers uh, do because the the stuff you know that that like 400 grit sandpaper that you put on, right? Um, uh, I mean, it just it just the, the pastel dust dust goes every place with that. Yeah, yeah. Where, where, whereas this is called pastel mat, and it's it doesn't feel very toothy at all however uh i will experiment but the videos i've seen everybody who said it just it, it's like buttery smooth and and the pastels seem to stick really really well with it Good. And, uh, so we'll see yeah they uh well back in back in the day um when i was doing some portraits and i needed to do a quick portrait uh i would use matte board you know, like just regular mat board that they would mat things. But uh, mm -hmm. but this mat board, it had almost like a felt surface on it. Mm -hmm. This is a very soft surface, yes. Yeah, and, and so it would take pastel really nicely. And it, and it looked nice, uh, it was easy to frame. And it was, it was better at hanging onto the pastel than a lot of the pastel papers and things. And I, I think that was that was long before they came out with this, you know, pastel paper that you know felt like sandpaper. So, yeah. I have a I have a question about pastels. Uh huh. Okay. Um, a lot of the the videos that I've watched where people are doing it, they do not use fixative on the completed because they say it dulls out the. So yeah. how in the world do you keep the pastel on the paper? Uh, okay, well, all right, normally the way that you work with the pastel is you'll start with your darker colors first and you'll, you know, treat it much like a painting. You'll block it in, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, so you'll do, you know, you'll block in your dark colors and things. And then if you're going to, depending on the look that you want, whether you want something that looks and shows the marks more, whether you want to make it look almost photographic and smooth. Um, if you want it photographic and smooth, then, you know, you do a lot of blending at that point. And that's on your base color. And then you'll take the base color, which tends to be darker anyway, and you'll lightly spray it. Okay. Um, and then you'll let that dry. You'll come back in 
and you'll come back in with your next passage, you know, your midtones uh, to kind of middle lights uh, and lay those down, you know, on top of that bass. And at that point, you know, you, you should start be, being able to build up a little bit of pastel and it should begin to soften a little bit for you as you, as you, you know, apply more. Um, and again, when that's done, you know, uh, you spray it again, but instead of, you know, spraying it rather solidly, you put like a really light misting of it on, just enough to give it some tack and hold it down. And again, you let that dry. And then the last passage is you're really putting in your lights and your highlights. And, um, and a lot of people do not fix those because as soon as you hit it with fixative, it will darken and it mm -hmm. will paint into the darker color underneath. Uh, so they just, you know, they just put those highlights and things and the, and the brightest lights on and leave them, you know, but a, a good portion of the surface of that will be fixed. So you don't have to worry about it, you know, falling off, particularly if you do your backgrounds and your big block it, uh, you know, just to keep them in place. So that's, that's how most people handle it. Um, there are people out there who, I don't know, you know, they say, they say that they don't fix um, any other pastels, but you know, I don't know how true that is because yeah, yeah as, as soon as you begin to move that board or even while you're trying to frame it, uh, you know, or, you know, pick it up and handle it in any way, that pastel is just going to kind of roll right on yep. down off of it. Yep. You know, yep. It, it's one of those mediums it's it's beautiful <laughs> but it's you know it there's a there's a lot of challenges in handling it, you know and framing it and presenting it um you know and even even once you have it under glass you know you can't just throw it in the back of your car and drive down and hang it at a show you know you really gotta pat it and wrap it and not get it to vibrate you know, while you're driving, because by the time you get to the show, when you set it up, you again see quite a bit of pastel dust just run right down the front of it, you know. And uh, it's, it's, kind of, it's kind of like the earthquake at the etch a sketch gallery, right? Kind of. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or when you're clearing off your etch a sketch, you know, and you're shaking it. You know, and yeah. when your image disappears, well, that's kind of what happens with pastel sometimes. So, unfortunately. Um, okay. Um, is Brock here? Let's see. How are we doing? Well, we got 13 people. I don't know who's here. I don't see Brock. Oh, okay. I guess not. All right. Um, oh. Yeah. Was it yesterday? Yeah, we were looking at the Hispanic American or the Hispanic mm -hmm. and the question came up about the anatomy of the year. Okay. So I went back and I pulled those drawings. Okay. So in, in case you're wondering, uh, you have the earlobe you have this outside band around the ear, it's called the helix. The inside kind of, you know, Y-shaped structure on the inside of your ear is called the anti-helix. This little tab that's right here to the front of your ear, which you can kind of grab, that's the tragus. And then the structure that sits inside, you know, right at the top of your earlobe, that's the anti Tragus. So there's the parts of the ear for you, okay? Just in case you were, you know, curious. Because we we all seemed to go blank yesterday about, you know, the, the parts of the ear. And we had, what, studied this maybe a month ago, you know, maybe a little over, okay? So, uh, yeah, like right there would be the anti-tragus, anti you know, where this is the tragus, right? So it's tragus, anti-tragus, helix, 
anti-helix, right? And then the earlobe. And the earlobe is either attached or free. Okay. And so if it's attached, that means yeah, there's no division. If it's free, that means that there's, you know, the, the part hanging down isn't attached. And so those, you know, those are things that you would look for in drawing the ear. Right. All right. So John. Yes. We have some poppies, right? Correct. Okay. And this is watercolor? Watercolor, correct. Nice. Yeah. Are you, you you must be using a different kind of paper or something? Um, what I did on, on this one, uh, yesterday I painted the entire page. I did the whole page with, uh, uh, a two inch brush, mm -hmm. wet, uh, green and blue with the whole page. Okay. Uh, and then uh, I let that dry overnight. And then I worked uh, the uh, container part all wet and uh, added the uh, poppy flowers onto the dry. So, but the, everything, the just the background was colored and uh, everything I did this morning. Uh, uh, I don't think it's a different paper. I don't know. Hmm. Well, you got a, you know, it looks like it has a different texture and effect to it. It, it has. Well, I, having it, uh, I, I really wet it down when I did mm -hmm. the, uh, the initial back okay. under, under painting. And I noticed that seemed to change the texture of the paper a little bit. Right, yeah, it made it a little more toothy. Yeah. Too. Right, correct. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's a beautiful, yeah, it's a beautiful effect. It's got this really nice softness to it. Um, yeah. Beautiful. And that is so beautiful, John. Right. Uh, I love you. the colors that you put into the, the picture. I'm sorry? There's so many beautiful colors you put into the picture itself. Ah, uh, yes. That this is from this is from my I have this in my house. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's it, is, is, does the does the picture have an iridescent surface? No, no, it's very matte looking. Okay. Yeah. Well, it it all. It's actually it's a it's a print, it's a pounded tin. I think is what the picture. Oh, okay. Is. Yeah, because it almost looks like a raccoon pot. You know, with with the uh, kind of the pattern and the color, yeah. You know, how it kind of moves, you know. But yeah, it's it's a beautiful little painting. It's really nice. And uh, nice. Yeah. Thank you. I whipped, it, I whipped it out in an hour this morning. <laughs> yeah. And uh -oh. and I I, I want to point out one thing to you and everybody else, which is, you know, you've got all the stalks for the flowers and the leaves. And the leaves are actually sort of defined and sharper yes. with the picture. Uh -huh. And the fact that you, you know, just put the color up there, you know, and let it be really kind of loose and didn't really try to define like a lot of the petals and stuff like that. And in a way, you know, it works better because your eye doesn't really focus on the flower, even though they're there it focuses, you know, on the pot, you know, that's your focal point. Yeah. And, uh, and that, you know, it works really well. So, you know, the other thing I like about it is that uh, everybody look at the uh, edge of the table or, or the horizon line is what we'll call it. This edge right here. And you see how the edge right here is a little bit sharp on this side. And then as it gets to this side, it gets really soft. Mm -hmm. And again, you know, what happens is our eye is pulled across, see, you know, pulled across the composition and kind of, you know, hover around in this area because all the edges are a little bit sharper and everything's a little more defined and everything else, it's there, you know, but it's, it's softer. 
you know, it's softer and it just lets, you know, lets your eye go to, you know, really the handle of the picture and, and the table right here. And, you know, that's a nice place to end up at, you know, as your eye kind of moves from pain. So, uh, yeah, nice, really nice job. Thank you. I was, I was trying to think of what I could do to come back from my great success yesterday of my uh, Arizona desert. <laughs> I see. Okay. All right. Well, I, I think you, I think you did a, you know, a really decent job at, uh, you know, at least matching, if not exceeding it. Okay. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Yeah, that's great. Um, all right, then we're going to talk about uh, Gwen Darby, okay? And uh, you know, she sent her drawings in from Friday. And remember, the you know the assignment was to draw from the figure. It wasn't to draw the whole figure. It was kind of focus on on some area and do as much as you can do, but you know, do it well. Um, you know, focus on it and don't just get something down there and, and try to get the whole figure on there and, and not really be able to develop it. So, and, uh, and she did a, a nice job at that. Okay. Now, she just got up and walked away. <laughs> well, I'm here. I'm just getting a notepad. Oh, okay. All right. So, um, I guess what I, I would say to you is um, like a lot of your values, you know, inside the leg, you know, not the outline, but, you know, what's happening between the two outlines on each side of the leg. Um, yes. You probably need to simplify that a little bit, okay? Okay. Because, because you've got, you know, light and dark areas right but there's nothing really holding let's see where it is. there's nothing really holding all these parts together because it goes from a tone to really the white of the paper uh and then back to a, a dark again and this whole leg would have had some kind of tone on it up there because it was all in you know not deep shadow but you know it was in a shadow it wasn't in light and really the only place, you know, on these legs that were in light were in around the kneecap and then down the shin or the outside of the leg and then the uh, shin bone of this, but only really about two thirds of the way down. And then because this leg is overlapping it, it has the shadow on it. So again, mm -hmm. there would be a tone, you know, down here. Um, and I think I had mentioned it to John or somebody yesterday when we were looking at the drawings. You know, when, I, when I'm trying to describe a leg or an arm or a torso or something of, of part of the human body, the very first thing I'm looking at is where's the light and where's the shadow? And so rather than trying to find my darker values first, you know, I divide it, you know, what's on the light side, what's on the dark side. And then on the shadow side, I'll just lay in, you know, a big kind of continuous tone. Not real dark, you know, I'm, I'm not trying to get real dark with it at first, but I, I want enough down there so that I can say, okay, all of that's in shadow. And then all, everything in light, I'm not gonna put a tone on yet, right? Um, and then from there, you know, I'll work generally on the shadow side first and build up the range of values on it. Uh, and then I'll go to the light side. And when you go to the light, the thing you have to be careful with is not getting any of the values on the light side anywhere near as dark as anything on the shadow side. They've got to stay separate. Okay? So, you know, Try to practice that, you know, when you're uh, when you're doing any kind of figure work or a face or anything like that. First thing you want to know, you know, after you get kind of where it is, how big it is, and, and what the orientation is, you know, divide it up into what's in light, what's in shadow, and that goes for painting as well. You know, that's that's always it's almost the same process. 
Now, so unifying your, your shadows would help. And then you've got a good variety of line here, right? You've got heavier, darker lines, you know, thinner, sort of, you know, very kind of crisp, but again, you know, not real dark in value, okay? And so all of those lines will say different things to you. They'll tell you a lot about how hard or soft the surface is, how quickly it's either turning toward the light or away from the light, uh, whether there's a shadow there or whether there's light. Now, for the most part, you know, your line work makes some sense, you know, in the sense that right here, you've got a nice strong dark where the two legs are coming together and one's overlapping and you're getting a compression area right there. And so that is, it's gonna be very dark. And, you know, you, you probably could see a fairly sharp line there, you know, or a dark shadow attached to it. When you came to the back side of the leg here, right, um, like this, this side of the leg, you know, makes sense to me, right? There's an outline, it's on the shadow side of the leg, but there's no tone attached to it. And then as it comes up here, it gets darker and there's really kind of a shadow attached there where the leg bends. But then as you come, you know, on, on the upper part of the leg, on the thigh, where it's making contact with the seat that she's sitting in, more than likely, there's gonna be a very strong line here, okay? Because again, that's an area where, you know, the leg is, you know, pushing into and compressing, you know, the cushion that she's sitting on. Um, and then the same thing with the floor, you know, along this side. And you've got, you know, you've got that. Now, on the other side, because the light's coming from the left toward the right, the outline on the leg here is going, it's, it's not gonna be real dark. Uh, you know, it can't be. You know, because there's almost like a highlight, you know, along the edge there. And anytime, Anytime that you get into a situation where you have a highlight at the edge of a, an arm or a leg or anything like that, rather than make a line, <coughs> some kind of tone, you know, behind it, you know, and let that, let that edge stay light. Um, and that, that'll tell you more about what's going on there than, than trying to use you know, an outline closing that shape, okay? Does that make sense to you? Yes. Okay. I don't think I'd even picked up a pencil to, to do anything right. in two yep. and a half years. Yep, yeah, so. Rusty on the skills. Yeah, you know, long, long story short, as I've told everybody else, it's like, okay, you know, you can make a mark, but now comes the hard part. You know, <laughs> you, ha you have to think about, okay, what kind of mark do I need to make? And what am I really trying to say with it? You know, am I trying to say there's light or there's shadow there? Am I trying to say that it's hard or it's soft? You know, what am I seeing? And, you know, if, if it looks soft and it's not real dark, then don't make like, a real dark line there, okay? Um, when you're looking at uh, a model, you know, or somebody, and you see like a dark edge that looks crisp and hard, you know, make that kind of line. If it looks light and fuzzy and soft, you try to make that kind of line. Okay. So, you know, follow what you're actually looking at. Okay. Um, and and you got to get past the idea that, okay, the leg ends there, so I've got to make an outline, you know, to describe it, because it doesn't always do that, <laughs> you know? Some, sometimes, you know, you get a light along the edge of that leg, like in the case that we were talking about. 
Um, you know, now here, all right, you, you kind of treated the whole thing a little bit more softly, right? You didn't overstate the value, um, you know, on the form itself. But again, you know, this is one of those situations where if you looked at the figure, you know, figure out where the light is, figure out where the shadow is, anything in shadow, just knock the whole thing in real lightly you know, in some kind of value or tone. It doesn't have to be real dark, but that will immediately separate, you know, the light and shadow areas, and it will begin to uh, give you a sense that the figure has, you know, volume and form to it, okay? Uh, yeah, well, we already looked at that. Okay, yeah, we... We haven't looked at this one. Okay. Now this is the longer drawing, okay? So you had 30 minutes for this one. And you know, you decided to do the whole figure front to back. Um, you know, I almost didn't send this one in. Well, I'm glad you I'm did not actually. happy with it. Oh, well, <laughs> you should be. I'm, I'm a lot happier with this one than, you know, some of the <laughs> earlier ones. Um, and here's why. Okay, you got, you got the figure in there. Um, and you got the sense of it moving backward, right? The, uh, the shoulder and the arm and the head, all the front comes forward. Everything, you know, back here is diminishing and going backward. Okay. So that part of it you did really well. Okay. Um, where in like your legs, you know, the proportions of the legs and things are, you know, pretty accurate to what was there. And then your proportions here, okay, mm, you know, you got her a little bit thick and heavy, um, you know, in comparison to, you know, what she really was. Um, and I'm, I'm kind of guessing you really weren't worried about this down here. It was kind of from the knees, you know, and really up to the torso. Um, but again, you know, you got our chest and everything, you know, a little bit heavy in comparison to her hips and her legs. But in this drawing, you know, you got the proportion, you know, the size relationships feel good. Uh, the, uh, you know, the sense of the legs sitting behind the hips, which are sitting behind the rib cage, which are sitting behind the shoulder, which is sitting behind the arm. You know, all of that works, you know, really nicely. So, you know, I would say that, you know, you may not have, you know, laid down the tone and everything as smoothly as you could have on this, but you got the proportion right. You got the sense of overlapping shape right. And out of the three drawings that we did, you know, this was the more difficult to pull off. And you did better pulling this off than you did, you know, maybe the other two. So, so I'm, I'm glad you sent this in. Okay, now. Yeah, I enjoy doing foreshortening. I would always go around and, and try to find those, those uh, angles. Yeah, now, you know, when we start talking about how you use the line and stuff, it still kind of applies, you know. Mm -hmm. um, because, you know, you've got heavy lines where it's like, well, okay, I probably wouldn't have made that that heavy. I would have used the stronger line underneath here to say, okay, there's some compression going on. Um, you know, so again, it's, it's a matter of, I know you haven't done this for a while, but, <clears throat> you know, as you're drawing it, you got to kind of think, what am I really seeing? What's going on there? And what kind of line do I need to make? You know, am I trying to tell somebody that there's weight, you know, uh, of the body laying against something? Or am I trying to say that <clears throat> I'm seeing an area that's catching a lot of light, um, you know, on a surface and it's curved and it's against maybe a darker background or a mid-tone background or a light background? And then what kind of light do I need or what kind of line, if I'm going to use a line, 
what kind of line do I need to put down there to describe that? So. That's the goal. Well, thank you for the feedback, Charles. Okay. Uh, and then we have Lady. And uh, this is a, a big painting that Lady sent in. Okay. Now, Lady, is this your, uh, where are you at? I'm here. Okay. Is this a big canvas that you showed us like yesterday or the day before? No, well, I don't think I've ever shown this one at all, but it is a... Well, no, you showed us a big blank canvas. I was just wondering whether you had done this on. Oh, yeah, yeah, it, that might have been it. Yes, that's a 24 by 30. Oh, okay. Yeah, because, yeah, you showed, you showed us it was a new canvas, and it was sitting on, like, the top of your toilet, you know, the back of it. No, 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 I haven't, we haven't gone to that one yet. <laughs> oh, we haven't gone to that one yet. Okay, all right, okay. Um, all right, but now, is this acrylic? Yes, it's acrylic and it's uh, alcohol ink markers. Okay, all right, yeah. Yeah, because the paint looks kind of like acrylic. It's got that feel to it. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, if you, if you take your eyes and you kind of squint down and look at the paint, mm -hmm. um, you know, you've got, <clears throat> you've got a nice sense because of the change of color, the yellows and things like that, you know, being in this area, you know, you, you get a sense of catching more light here, right? And then you move into kind of mid-tone and then shadow on the back side of it. So in that sense, you know, your colors and values, you know, are generally working pretty well. Um, I guess, um, my question would be, in looking at this, were you, were you just painting this sort of as an idea uh, as, of a pair, or were you looking at a pair? Did you have reference, you know, that you were looking at? Uh, something to follow, or how did you go about doing this? No, I, I did not have a reference. Uh, my nephew, who's a, uh, an art major, he helped me to draw the pair because I'm not, I, I don't, I can't draw. So he helped me to draw the pair. I beg and, your pardon. What do you mean you can't <laughs> draw? <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I can't. <laughs> That's, that's my line. You can't use it. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, John, we, well, actually, no, you see, you can, you can be, you can be, be the new person I work on about that because see, John can't say he, he can't draw anymore. Right. Can't say that. Definitely. Right. But I, I have a drawing challenge. And so uh, I was able to, he was able to help me uh, to make the shape of the pear and the rest of it was just the stem and the leaves, which, I wasn't really happy with, but you know, you, you were in the class yesterday speaking with Gwen about her taking a painting that she did five years ago and changing it, mm -hmm. you know, and I, I stuck that one over the refrigerator. So that wasn't an easy thing as it is. So it's, it is what it is, you know, <laughs> it's there. <laughs> yeah. And um, so I just kind of freehand the, uh, all of it. So I, I wasn't happy with it, but I like it, you know, I tell everybody it's a banana and let them figure it out. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. If you told me that was a banana, that wouldn't work so well for me. I mean, it's, yeah. Yeah. It it looks pear like. You yeah. Know, I know. <laughs> and you know, pears come in a lot of different colors and things. Yes. Um, yes. And in fact, I'll I'll have to get it out um, at some point uh, and show you guys. I I did a painting of a pear and an apple that were well, you know, well, well past their prime. And mm. uh, <coughs> you would be amazed at the colors, you know, that you can get in a piece of fruit, you know, particularly when they, you know, get so ripe that they're almost spoiled. Um, yes. Yeah. But uh, not that I'm calling the pear spoiled or anything. But I'm so, you know, what, you when, I buy, when I buy, when I buy pears, I, I have the, the check girl person to put the pears back in my hand because uh -huh. I, 
I don't put them in a bag because they bruise so easily because I like to buy them when they're really ripe. And so when they're really ripe, they do have all those beautiful colors. Oh, yeah. You know, so yeah, that's what I was thinking of. Yeah. And I mean, you know, pears come in greens, they come in reds, mm -hmm. you know, golden colors, brownish tones. Um, yes. Yeah, there's all types. And, uh, you know, some of them are really, really bright, intense, you know, yellow, green, and red. You know, all yes. at the same time, they're almost like a mango. Um, yes. Yeah. It, it's, you know, as a subject and, and something fun to paint, you know, pears are always great because, mm. you know, they're, uh, you know, there are, it's the shape of them. And I don't know whether you guys know this or not, but, uh, you know, one of the things when you're drawing the female figure, okay, if you think about the torso and the hips of the, the figure that you're drawing, um, you know, they really make like a pear shape. Okay. And a lot of uh, drawing instructors will talk about that, you know, find that pear shape on the female form. Uh, and you can really see it, you know, uh, because it's almost like, you know, this is the abdomen coming down, you know, inside the hip on each side. And, yep. you know, all, all you have to do to make a female form is, you know, add legs and then arms up there and a neck and a head. And you got a, you got a woman instead of a, a pair. Um, but I digress. That goes off in a different direction. <laughs> um, well, while you're on the digression, can I say something? Sure. Because I, I, I can see her, I mean, I can see the pair as a woman with her legs up and then leaning forward. <laughs> Her <Okay>. silhouette. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, yeah, yeah. good. Right, yeah, so you're looking at it from the back. Yeah. The back side with, right. uh, you know, she's a contortionist, so she can get down low. Yeah. With the yeah. knees on coming up on either side of the bodies. Yeah. Body. Yeah, and the female figure, if, if they were balled up, would look, yeah, kind of like that, you know? Hmm. Interesting. And, yeah, and with the movement of the, uh, you know, the stem, it kind of reinforces yeah. that that curved movement. You know, it does. So, um, anyway, getting back to it as a pair, all right. <laughs> um, you know, and as a painting of a pair, all right. Um, you know, it's 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 interesting that you chose to paint the pair. You know. And it's really, you know, just a concept of it. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, you weren't trying to really capture light and shadow and form. Um, yeah. And you were just using color. And I've seen you in a lot of your pieces use this kind of way of applying color before where mm -hmm. you, you lay it down in sort of a circular stroke. Well, actually the way I do it is I just put globs of paint uh -huh. And I get my, my tool of choice, which is a balloon. Okay. And I just make swirls. <laughs> okay. Isn't that funny? Yeah. yeah. And so and I, have another, I have another smaller piece like that, and it looks like pansies. And so. Well, this, I was about to say, yeah, this kind of looks like it, pansies. It does, it does look like pansies. Yeah, it's, it's Beautiful almost, pansies. It's almost like it's made out, out of flower petals. Yeah. And you yeah. got you got some beautiful kind of interesting flow of paint, you know, one color into another. Um, yes. In doing that, it's it's fun. It's it's a really fun piece. How long it take you to finish? Uh, I don't. It's hard to say because I it hung up in the kitchen for about a month, just blank, <laughs> and it. <laughs> Maybe longer. Um, and once I got started, I have some good music on and a good pot of tea. It didn't take me that long to do it. Mm. Maybe a couple of hours. Oh, the flowers? Oh. No, that's all paint. And it's just, again, I may put two different colors of paint down and take my balloon and just push the balloon in it, twist it, and that's the effect you get. Mm. Is this something you came up with? 
Oh, yes, Gwen. I came up with that one all by myself. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for thinking I'm that, that creative. You know, oh, honey, I love it. <laughs> it's, uh, it's something. There's a an artist on YouTube, and her name is Me, Me Painting, and she does a lot of acrylic painting with balloons, and she her thing is bubbles. She is a bubble fanatic, and her work is gorgeous. So... So she paints bubbles or? She paints what? bubbles. She paints bubbles with, with using balloons. And, and, you know, you blow up a balloon and you put it into the paint and you turn it. Or you just dab it and it gives it those different effects. Yeah, I could see. Have you ever ever seen any of the, oh, who was the glass blower from Seattle? That, uh, Hail to Huli? To Huli, yes. yes. To Huli? Yeah, yes, have you ever tried any glass tahuli? No, I've never heard of tahuli. Oh, oh, look him up and give that a shot. Yeah, he's, okay. got, he's got many uh, examples of his work at the uh, Atlanta Botanical Gardens. Yes, he oh. does. Yeah. yeah, he has had whole uh, whole park exhibits before. Okay, well, a couple of times. Lot, yeah, there's a lot of his work in Atlanta because he did a big show at the Botanical Garden about 10 years ago. Um, and while he was here, uh, the Botanical Garden bought a great deal of it. The High Museum bought quite a bit of it. And then um, Georgia Tech also bought some. And- um, Oh, it's where, a where is it at Georgia Tech? What's, what's okay, you got Peachtree. What's the next road back toward the freeway? That's one way. Um, one, the one way street? Yeah, it's a one way street. Um, and it's going north. Yeah, I can look it up. I, I yeah. probably can figure yeah. that out. Yeah, uh, Georgia Tech has, has a- Brain, Brain yeah, Street? It has a, a big um, office there, you know, uh, or, or a big building. Um, and, it's got a, and it's got a big atrium that's all glass and as you go down the road if you look over into it they have these huge uh chihuahuas hanging from the ceiling oh and i'm gonna have to big. go see that yeah and if you go over there in the evening when the inside of the building's lit up those those things just you know they're like on fire it's great glow <laughs> yes yeah. really beautiful. is that spring street yeah spring that's it Oh, okay. I was going the other way. Yeah. Yeah, Is that the bookstore? No, uh-uh, no. The... Oh, the new um, art and architecture yeah. building. Spring would be, yeah, the, yeah. you know, I mean, the bookstore is on the next street down. The okay. Next freeway. You know, from Peachtree, it's like four streets that you get before you hit 75, 85. Yeah. And it's it's like the one not not Peach Street, but the next one down. And and the campus now runs all the way up to the edge of that street in in a lot of those areas. So but uh yeah. Anyway, if you're down in there, you know, there's lots of places to go check out Jubilee's work. Yeah. Yeah. Uh and then okay, we have these. Okay. Yeah. So now these look like they're poured. Nope. Nope. Not, nope, not poured. Okay. It is just um actually that I had a little um a little silicone oil in the paint. Mm -hmm. uh, mm. when I when I did that. And um uh, that one I called uh, it's a long title. That's from my youngest brother. And it's entitled "Have You Lost Your Effing Marbles?" Because my brother, <laughs> okay, <laughs> because my my brother has. So <laughs> we all I like have, your title. <laughs> we, we we all have brothers like that. <laughs> yes, yes. You know, our and so relatives like that. So yeah, I I did that one, and then I have I'm looking at them, the other parts to his his artwork. I don't know if you can see this. 
I don't know if you all can see that. Those here, are the hang, shooters. Here, hang on one, one moment. Okay, hold, hold that up and then uh, talk. Okay, Th these are the, if you've ever played marbles, uh -huh. yes. the largest marble are, are called the shooters. Yeah, oh yes, the shooting marbles. And so this is his shooting marbles. I have to just mount this on um, a, a light piece of uh, wood so he can hang it up with his, uh, his other little piece. Okay. He lost his marbles. <laughs> yeah, he has lost. <laughs> yeah, well, we're all losing our marbles, it seems. These days. Yeah. I, so. I like your humor, lady. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Gwen. <laughs> Yeah, so that's, um, again, there was just a little bit of silicone oil in the paint mm -hmm. when I put it down. And um, so my question is, how did you put it down? Again, in globs. Okay. I just put it down in globs. And then I took a, and I lightly, I used a, um, a brush, just a regular old brush and kind of brushed it. And that was the effect that came out of it uh, when mm -hmm. I did it. Okay. Did the oil go first or the paint go first? No, the oil was in the paint. Yeah. So okay. I put a couple of drops of silicone oil in the paints, and then I put, I take that back. I didn't use a brush. I, I swiped it with a piece of plastic. Mm. I had a piece mm. of, I had a piece of, uh, from the Dollar Tree, they had plastic cutting boards. And so that's what I used, the cutting board. And yeah, I can see. I can see that I've done watercolor with with plastics, and I, you end up with effects like that. Yeah, and so that was the effect. And then I, after I put them down and drew the circles to make the marbles, I went back <laughs> and colored it in black, <laughs> you know, black to give the illusion like the marbles are like you hit it with the shooter, and the marbles are just scattering in three D. <laughs> yes. So your outlines. You know, did you use like a glass or something with black paint on it and just like set them down at different sizes? The ones? outline, yeah, the outlines were actually just any circular thing I had around a small dish, a top, okay. you know, yeah. and that's all I used and, and just outlined it in, um, I think again, that was Indian, and not Indian, um, alcohol ink or Sharpie. I can't remember which one. Oh. And what size is this lady? Uh, that one is. Two, two, oh, two, two. I wrote them all down. Mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, is, there's there's a lamp. Okay. You know. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's maybe not like. Very, pardon? See, it's eleven by fourteen. I think it is. Okay. Yeah. 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 Kind on of, canvas. Yes, on canvas. Okay. Like it. Yeah. Thank here's you. another. Here's another shot of it. Yeah. Where is it? Yeah, really nice effect of, you know, how the paint is cooling and kind of moving. So, yeah, nice job on that. And then here we have the photo of your canvas, your 40 by 60 that's sitting, you know, over your shoulder. <laughs> I thought you guys were kidding. I got up and I heard over the toilet. And yeah. I said, surely I am losing my hearing. No, no Gwen, you just said it. That's my sense of humor. <laughs> um, no, I, okay, so I, now, I, we, now we know where it's going to go. But now you were talking <laughs> about doing watercolor on this, right? Yes, um, I'm going to use my um, complete and total ignorance of the medium to be my superpower. And I'm going to try to do that uh, canvas and watercolor. I've been watching some YouTube videos, again, I, I watch a lot of those, where they used a watercolor ground on canvas to paint on a canvas, uh, on a piece of canvas. So, and that is a huge piece that's hang, hanging over the toilet, and mm -hmm. I'm going to actually put it against the wall. And I'm going to use my shower curtain as the color palette. You see the shower curtain. Is, oh, I love the, the curtain, yes. It's gorgeous, very pretty. But now, yeah, okay, but, my, my question to you would be, If you're going to put watercolor on that, are you you're going to be using it flat, right? Or yes. You, yeah. Okay. Yeah, because if, yes. if you try to use watercolor on that and it you're keeping it tilted or vertical, then the watercolor is going to run and drip. Right. No, I'm gonna. I I have a huge uh, I have a huge mud cloth uh, 
rug in my living room. So I'm going to roll my rug up and move everything and just take over the living room for whatever time it takes. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's been sitting, it's been uh, leaning against the wall there for quite some time. So I just really want to, I'm trying to see what I'm going to do. And I've decided the watercolor in the ground is what I'm, you know, I'm going to do that. I'm going to, be totally ignorant. I don't know how it works, and I'm gonna figure it out. And if it doesn't come out right, eh, the just canvas paint. and some paint. That's yeah. right. Okay. No life Do you, you have any idea what you're gonna to try to paint on it? Yeah, um, I'm going purely abstract. I'm just again the another gentleman on YouTube I've been watching is Coco B. I mean, his work is gorgeous. It's just so free and so. It's just, uh, it, it's hard to describe. It's just so free, so beautiful. The colors are just so vibrant. I want, when people come in, well, not too many people use this bathroom, but me, but when people come in, I want it to be so in your face bold. That's what I'm looking for. Just a big giant pop of colors. Okay. Have, have you ever come across where um, there's some books and I'm sure there are videos on it too about let your, let the watercolor paint itself by just tilting in different yeah. directions while it's wet. Yes, you I've get seen some those. real unique things yeah. out of that. Yeah, yes, I've seen those videos. Yeah, you yeah. can get a lot of dripping and running and stuff going on. Yes. Um, yeah. Okay, so the what I was going to say to you based on mm -hmm. your email was, you know, canvas is not really made to take watercolor. Right. But you know that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're going to do it that. anyway. And that's okay. Yeah. You know, you can. Um, now, depending on the type of watercolor you have, okay, mm -hmm. and depending on the effect that you want, if you use a lot of watercolor and get it, you know, get it wet, but not like soupy, but just, you know, thick, um, yes. you can always take it and drip it onto a wet surface and let it kind of begin to spread. And you'll get something similar, though not exactly, like your marble piece, right? You'll get that kind of okay. feeling and stuff. Um, but whatever you do, you know, however you apply it, you know, let it dry thoroughly. And then once it's dry, before I started picking it up, moving it around, I would get some clear acrylic spray, spray right? Mm. right. And, you know, when you get it to the point that you like it, I would lightly spray it with the acrylic, okay? okay. And what that will do, and particularly since it's going to be in the bathroom, um, <laughs> well, just because, you know, while you're shower. showering stuff, <laughs> you know, you're going to get moisture in there, right? And if this mm -hmm. watercolor gets wet, then it's going to start moving. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so yeah, that's a good thing to know about watercolor and and being in around water. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You, okay. Normally, you put watercolor, you know, in a frame and and glass over it, so that okay. it keeps the moisture off of it and humidity. But in this particular case, uh, since you're going to put it on this canvas, that's fine. You know, but then get like I said, a, a can of clear acrylic spray. Um, mm -hmm. You can get that in matte, you can get it in gloss, you can get it in what they call eggshell. Um, and I generally kind of go toward the eggshell rather than the gloss because the gloss is like too glossy. Okay. And you can't see the piece because then it gets like hot spots and stuff on it. Okay. Um, the matte is a little, it's too matte and, and kind of kills the color. Um, mm -hmm. So the, the satin or the eggshell, you know, work better for me. Um, but, you know, spray it lightly and then let that dry and then go back and go the other direction with it. Spray it again. Do, the, do that four or five times and build up the acrylic a little at a time. But don't, don't get it, like, wet. Okay. Right? All okay. you want to do is just a light spray on it and then let that dry. And then when you come back the next time, you know, and go the other direction, anything that you missed the first time, you'll pick mm -hmm. up 
generally the second, but you'll slowly kind of build up the acrylic on it. And if you do that four or five times, you should be able to cover that canvas and seal it. And that, that watercolor should be, you know, fairly permanent then. You know, okay. even in the bathroom, you don't, you won't have to worry about the actual paint getting wet and moving at that point because the acrylic will seal it and uh, protect it. All right. Well, that's good to know. Thank you so much. It was kind of my fault. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Now let, let's see how, how it works in practical application. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> we shall see. Okay. Enjoy. Yeah. Um, now beyond that. Okay. Let's see. Then we have, um, you're up to your old tricks. You got a big piece of cardboard. <laughs> uh, you know, you, well, that's what I love about you. You know, you're, you're good at recycling stuff and, and using. That's right. You know, I mean, you, you use stuff that's easily found around you. And so you've put a couple of coats of gesso on this cardboard. And yes. so you got a plan? Yes. Uh, the desk that I'm sitting at, I only bought the desk so I can get the box. So <laughs> here you go. Here. Now that's a strategy. That's a strategy. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I don't know whether you know this or not, but, you know, if, uh, if, if you go to, like, Big Lots or uh, the dollar store, they usually have a dumpster full of big empty boxes out behind the store. Oh, I know. We're real good friends, so. Okay. All right. <laughs> so, uh, this Just so you don't have to spend $100 to buy a desk to get the box. Oh, well, I needed a desk, too. But oh, know. okay. Um, this one is going to, um, I have another large wall. I, have a, I live in a small apartment, which has these weird large walls in these odd places. So there's a, another large wall in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm going to do a mixed media piece with that. Okay. Um, my, my plan is to, um, to put a, a bus of a, a woman somewhat, you know, a little bit off to the right, but, you know, definitely not centered and use a tropical theme with big tropical flowers and do a negative painting. Uh, of these different layers, the tropical leaves and plants and birds, and the body, her body, her her outfit. I'm pulling out that wor world famous wallpaper, and I'm going to use all the wallpaper as uh, the design in her dress or, or her outfit. Okay, all right, yeah, that sounds like a plan. Yeah, it sounds like a plan. It's been gestured for months, so it tells you about my plan, right? Yeah, but usually once you get into it, you, you kind of, you know, yeah. you figure it out. So, yeah, yeah you, you just got to jump in there and do it, right? Yeah, so. Yeah. That's another, what plan for yeah, there's another angle of your pair. <laughs> so, yes. Yeah. Oh, that's but, pretty. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we looked at that a little bit earlier. Yeah. All right. That's my pair. Yeah. Okay, so that's that's your stuff. Let's see, is uh, Larry here? He was here earlier. He probably escaped. He does that. We'll hang around for a few minutes. Um, okay. I'm showing up. I just wanted to let you know I'm here. Uh, uh, You're what? I told you I was gonna be. I was gonna be very late today, and I was, but I'm. Okay. Uh, All right. Well, you're coming up. I think pretty close to next. Um, but before that, you know, we're going to show this rather interesting, shocking piece of art. <laughs> Bill Clinton? Yes. Yeah, that's who I thought it was. That is Bill Jeez. Clinton. As a woman. Uh, well, he's in the blue dress that Monica Lewinsky was wearing. Oh, my goodness. Oh. That's, that's, that's oh. blue dress. Okay. Oh my goodness! Who did this? Uh, <laughs> well, her name is uh, Petrina Ryan Keel. She's telling somebody, "Shut your mouth." Yeah. Um, well, I, I don't know. He's pointing. Uh, but uh, this was actually commissioned by Hillary. <laughs> 
No, it was actually done and commissioned by Jeffrey Epstein. Oh, no. Holy shit. No, they were friends, oh, no. too. Yeah. No, seriously. I, you that's know, that's right. what I've read about it. Um, yeah. Now, why, why Larry wanted to share this with us, I have no idea. But he sent it in. And, uh, we will have to talk to the boy. Well, yeah. You know, we're always going to have to talk to that boy. Um, but anyway, <laughs> it, it, it is definitely a conversation piece, is it not? So, anyway, it is. Yeah, but uh, no, this was this was done. Um, he's a European artist, um, but it was done back in 2012, and uh, it's fairly notorious. I mean, you know, people know about it. <laughs> Just one one more thing, right? Yeah, okay. about the story of Bill and Mike. Yep. Yeah. Anyway, um, so moving on, uh, we got uh, Rebecca's work. So she's got two more letters. She's got M for mouse. And then the other one is uh, N for Nightingale. And uh, you're, you're getting on up there in the alphabet. I'm halfway through. Okay. I'm halfway through. This, yeah. is, this is literally the halfway point. Okay. All right. Yeah. But, you know, I mean, you know, the story's coming together. You're, uh, you know, the last couple of illustrations that you've done are improving and getting better. And I guess I have, well, how do I want to say this? I guess my concern would be your earlier illustrations were more simplified. These are getting a little more rendered in, in detail, right? And, um, and so I guess my suggestion to you would be go back, you know, as you're doing this, you know, have them up so that you can see what you've done earlier um, and try to keep things consistent. You know, either go back and, you know, maybe touch up some of the earlier ones, try to get a little more detail and or as you're doing, you know, the ones coming forward, try to simplify them a little bit more because you, you're the first part of it. You know, they were, they were pretty very simple you know, um, very childlike, you know, uh, illustrations. Mm -hmm. And like I said, these are getting a little more, you know, sophisticated. So, so just. Oh, I must tell you, I've been so um, inspired by the people that we've been looking at. And mm -hmm. so the wall on the left hand side has about seven different colored pencils in it. So I'm really experimenting with that Good. and having a lot of fun. But you're right, they they are becoming a little more um, detailed. Mm -hmm. And so I can I can very easily simplify. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm having a lot of fun because of what we're learning in class about the different combinations of colors. And mm -hmm. I'm trying it out as we go along. Yeah. Well, and you know, again, it can go either way you could always go back and take some of the techniques and things that you're using in some of the later pieces and go back and you don't have to rework the whole illustration, just, you know, add right. some of those textures and layers of color and stuff into some of your other pieces, you know, and it will kind of bring them up to the same. Okay. Well, in, for example, in this one, I looked at a whole bunch of different pictures of mice. Mm -hmm and then took the ideas from about several different pictures and put them together. Okay. He's supposed to be greeting somebody at the door and he's got a piece of cheese in his hand and he will tell them whether or not he's going to share it with them or not. <laughs> I see. Okay. Yeah. Well, I, I see the color down there. I wasn't sure that that was cheese because his fingers were kind of folded around it. Uh, you yeah. know, but, uh, each, each page ha definitely has a story. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Now I can see it a little more clearly. Okay. 
Um, but yeah, again, it's, it's kind of that thing of, yeah, you're getting a little more detailed. Um, and I wouldn't really call it detailed as much as the techniques that you're using are getting a little more sophisticated, like, you know, the color in color area over here where you've taken the greens and the warmer tones and things and mixed them together. And it makes a much richer sort of interesting surface there. And well, I, I was also reacting to your comment about add more color. Right. Uh, I thought I thought that was a very pertinent thing to tell me. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, yeah, and you didn't you you weren't taking that same approach in the early ones. So, like I said, easy thing to fix. Go back in, throw a little extra color, you know, in some of those areas of blocks in some of your earlier illustrations, and you're kind of at the same place. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Yeah. You know, same thing with this guy. So, you know, it's, it's the composition, the design, everything else is, you know, really, really come together. So it's nice, nice stuff. I'm having a, I'm having a blast. It's so much fun. Oh, that's great. The Rebecca and Joy. <laughs> I am. I'm really having fun and I can't yeah. wait to share it with my grandchildren and your friends yeah, <laughs> will be willing to so, get yeah, your and the grandchildren that, yes <laughs> the, th the thing that's funny is it's like water off a duck's back to them because they don't know you've spent time doing this to them it's just here's another book let's read it so <laughs> you'll have to be older to appreciate it yeah you could share the the, the recordings and uh, your part in those and, and show them how it developed Mm -hmm. That's a great idea. Thank you. Yeah, yeah that, good idea. Thank you. Very nice. Very, really nice. Okay. So now we're going to look at Susan the Dare. Okay. So these are from Friday, and, and these are Susan's drawings. Um, did we go over these, Susan, or not? No, I, I just I thought I sent them in Tuesday, but I, I forgot to do it. So. Um, but um, so I sent him in this morning. Okay. <laughs> no, we haven't. Right. Well, better late than never. That's kind of where I was too. I was <laughs> late on sending mine in. Yeah. Okay. So, um, you know, I thought we had talked about these, but maybe, yeah, maybe not. At any rate, um, so let's start with the lady in the chair. Okay. So okay. your overall proportions and things like that, like on her, um, uh -huh. In looking at her, you've got the upper body, you know, much heavier and larger than the lower body, part of her legs, you know, her legs and her hips. And the thing is, in this particular pose, it's that it was kind of like really extremely short, right? And so, um, you know, the legs here look very short to me. It's like, you know, if, if the page could be extended out uh, over here, kind of where your, your name begins on, on the, uh, the side image, you know, the legs could have been way out there. And then it would have been sort of more proportional and conveyed the idea that, oh, okay, she's laying back more and that her feet and, and everything are closer to us and that her arms and all are furthest away from us, right? Okay, yeah. And, uh, yeah, and now I guess my question to you is, and, and I'm just guessing, right, is that when you started drawing this, somehow you began to run out of paper as you got down to those feet. Is that about what happened? Um, yeah, yeah, and I'm, I'm kind of trying to conserve my paper. I need to order some more paper, but I haven't done that yet. Some more tablets I need to. Um, okay, all right. Um, so, so that's why I'm kind of pushing yeah. people. So, so when you get into a situation like that, right? Rather than try to squeeze the feet on to the paper, go ahead and just let it flow right off the side, okay? And not show them all the feet. Yeah, okay. yeah, just leave, you know. But, you know, try to get the proportion right you know, and again, you know, it reinforces that idea that, oh, okay, her legs are closer to us and then her shoulders are further away. And she's laid back in that chair more. 
and and you would have gotten it. Okay. Now, as far as the actual style of drawing it and your line work and stuff like that, okay. Um, you know, you you're still kind of using kind of the same line and outlining things very evenly. Um, and you can do that. You know, I mean, there's a lot of artists who do that. Uh, but in my mind, you know, what it does is it flattens the form. Okay. And so one of the things I would like you to try to do is start thinking about how you're going to vary the line. Uh, and when I'm talking about line work, I'm talking about, you know, these outside edges, you know, when the leg comes, you know, to the edge, right? Uh, how am I going to treat this line versus the line on the inside? And what's going on with each one of them? And in like in this particular case, um, there would have been a lot of compression, you know, between, you know, the calf of this leg and the leg going underneath it. And yes. Yeah. So right in here. And so that would have probably been a very dark line where on the outside of the leg, because the light was coming from the left, you know, to the right, and it was hitting the side of the leg here. It was also hitting the hand, um, you know, a couple of places on the figure. Um, you know, having a very light outline along there would have said, okay, so this side is in light. The other side of the leg would be in shadow. Right. Right. And that's, you know, that's kind of what that, that's kind of why we vary the line. Because it, even if we don't get around to putting in all the shadows and do the rendering and stuff like that, it still tells the person looking at it that part of the body was in light, part of it was, you know, in some kind of shadow or had a tone attached to it. Okay. And that's kind of what we're after. Because then it makes it feel like it's got volume and it's round and it's turning, whether you get around to shading it or not. Right? Now, in, in your other drawing, okay, again, kind of the same thing, right? Um, here, though, you know, the overall proportions, the length and things like that are better, right? Um, you know, her chest and her, her head were, in this case, actually closer to us because we were kind of looking down on her and so the rib cage and the shoulders and everything would have been closer to us and you know you could have actually maybe made the arms and things a little bit bigger than you did um but still you know there's more weight up here and then this kind of diminishes and goes away um and so that kind of gets that idea that okay the feet are the furthest thing away and then we're you know we're somewhere you know, up here in, in relationship to the figure. So uh, now, you know, you're seeing areas of the body that are falling into shadow and areas that are falling into light. And I've said this a couple of other times today, but, you know, look for the areas that really fall into, you know, clearly this is light and areas that are clearly in the shadow and just group all the shadow, you know, pieces together and then just put an overall general tone on them. Right. And it just says, okay, that side of the body is in shadow, this side's in light. You see, it begins to separate them. As you do that, again, you know, even if you don't get back in to like really render it and make some of the areas darker and lighter, it, it's still a simple way of saying, I've got light and shadow there and telling somebody that the figure is a three-dimensional form. Okay. Uh, so you can really get away with not doing a lot, you know, on, on drawing the figure and still convey a lot of information. It's you just have to, you know, kind of think about it a little bit and simplify it. So. Okay. Yeah, and when you get uh, like, now this was your longer drawing, okay? And I'm gonna blow her up a little bit because she's kind of small. 
everybody to see her, okay? Um, when I look at this drawing, it immediately reminds me, you know, and feels like uh, an artist that we've looked at before. And uh, do you remember the artist Egon Schiele? Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That before, okay. Yeah. Well, you might. <laughs> and yeah, I did when, look up some of his work. And, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, you might. Yeah, you might want to look at his work because you. You're, yeah, I have. Yeah, your line quality. Yeah, your line quality is a lot like his, you know, and and it's just something that na kind of natural for you, which is good. Okay, you know, don't don't lose that. Hold on to it. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. Now you know in the drawing, you know your proportions, you know are, you know pretty good. Um, you know, the size relationships of the head, the shoulders, the arm, uh, to the rest of the body. Okay, work. Um, you've got the sense of overlapping shape. You know, the shoulder coming in front of the rib cage, which is coming in front of the lower back, which is coming in front of the hip, which is coming in front of the upper leg, which is coming in front of the calves, right? So it's, you know, it's making logical sense and stepping backward, right? Um, again, you know, the only thing I would say as far as, you know, maybe trying to do it a little bit differently or improving it would be think more about where, you know, where you need a heavier, darker line and where you need a lighter line. Uh, because in your drawing, you've got them all. It's just that you haven't put them necessarily where you need them, right? Like, for example, um, under this arm and under this elbow in particular, that could have been much stronger and darker because she's got all of her weight on that elbow, right? So a darker line, you know, kind of similar to what you've got back here, would have made sense, right? Right. Um, the line underneath her body, right? And particularly like right here where the rib cage and the breast come together, there was a really dark area in there. Um, and so again, that could have been darker. Uh, okay. Right? And again, what that yeah. says is there's weight, you know, and it's making contact with something else. And then on the other end, where there is not contact and where it's not being pushed up against something, uh, like the outside of this leg. See, that could have been a much lighter line. You know, and when I say lighter, I mean not as dark in value. Okay. Same okay. thing here, you know, around, you know, the buttocks area and stuff like that. You know, if, okay. if, these, if these would have been lighter in value and your dark line was here and here and maybe on the inside right there, that would have really pulled the front of her body up much closer to you and told you that there was weight on that figure, you know, and then that there was light, you know, back here on the legs. Okay, okay I, can, I can try to redo. Uh, yeah, that. no, I, would, I wouldn't say, yeah, I wouldn't say redo it, you know. I just keep that in mind next time you do a drawing or try to do another figure drawing and think about where, where do I want to put that line, you know, and what kind of line do I want? You know, what am I trying to say with it? Am I trying to say that there's weight on it? Or am I trying to say that there's light on it, you know? And so, okay. yeah. yeah. So as you're drawing along, I know that's a lot to think about, <laughs> you know, because it's like, okay, Where's the line? How long is it? You know, and then you got to ask yourself, okay, what kind of line am I going to make? And, you know, does it have to be dark or light? Does it have to be hard and soft? Okay. That's why, that's why artists are never lonely because we're always talking to ourselves. You know? so. right. Girls, do you do that automatically or are you still thinking about it? Kind uh, of, I kind of do it automatically at this point. You know, but I still catch myself really looking at stuff and asking myself, okay, 
you know, where's the weight? You know, where's the light? Where's the shadow? What has to be hard? What has to be soft? And that's usually before I make my first mark. So, mm, okay. That's in yeah. that 10 minutes of looking before you start drawing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if it's, yeah, if it's 10 minute drawing, then you're going to spend like two minutes looking at it before you. Okay. It. Yeah. And that gives you time to really sort of think through, you know, how do I really need to approach this? Right. And then, you know, you get into the drawing of it and, you know, you kind of turn it off and it just kind of goes on, you know, autopilot, you know, sitting there looking and making lines. Um, but if you've thought that through, a lot of that stuff sticks and, you know, you, you're conscious of it and you're like, okay, yeah, I was going to really push that harder, you know, and you can do that. Okay. Thank you. So. Yeah. It does. All right. All right. Well, guess what? That's everything. Oh, no. It's time? <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, it, it is just about time. And, uh, and, and we're out of work. We've covered every, everything everybody sent in. Okay. I've got a question for you. We can do this at the end of the hour because it's real off topic here. But I have oh. a question. Okay. Okay. So, ask. We're, we're here at the end of the hour. <laughs> okay. I don't know if this is coming through or not. Uh, yeah, kind of, sort of, in a broken yeah, up way. In a broken up way? Yeah. I can take a picture of it and shoot it to you. Well, part, yeah, part of it's in focus, part of it's not, and it keeps going back and forth. Because, yeah. Um, yeah, you, it's something about your camera is trying to, you know, Get evidently you've got some kind of setting on there. Uh, where, like in Zoom, you can block out the background. Yeah, right, right. There's right. something set up in the camera that's focused on you and then taking everything else and blurring it out so that... Okay. Yeah. Um, and it's kind of doing it to that piece of artwork, too. So, okay. But, uh, so what's your question about it? It's an unsigned piece that I came across in my house, and I just took it apart as we were talking. Mm -hmm. And it appears to have an underpainting under it that looks a lot like Rick's. So yeah. I, I, I think he must have done that, but I, I can't, I don't have any memories about it. And it's all framed, and I don't know if it was in one of the shows or not. Okay. Uh, I don't know whether it was in one of the shows, but that was a piece of reference that we worked from um, because I did a series of geishas. Oh, okay. And, and so, yeah, he may have used that same piece of reference, you know, to do Oh, ah, okay. Yeah, but yeah, we did that at Benson. So. And which class was that then your, um, uh, gosh, I had to have been in a class he was taking that I was not in, so multimedia yeah, I maybe? Yeah, I think it was probably like painting and mixed media. Okay. Because it's, it's an acrylic piece, isn't it? I don't, well, he may have worked in acrylic. It looks like watercolor to me, or it could have been his, he was into uh, water miscible oils. Water miscible oils? Okay. Yes, <laughs> which he had met the fellow that won the Candler Park um, okay. show. That was, you know, before maybe it's 18, 2018, 2019, 20. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, yeah, I guess take a picture of it and yeah, send it to yeah, me. Yeah. Okay. It's so real off topic for here, but. No, not really. I mean, it's still a painting. Um, but okay. So what, what do you really want to know about it? <laughs> you know, I, yeah, yeah. You filled in more than I know. He, I've never saw it when, when he was alive that I can remember. And all of a sudden I came across it and uh, the tons of things we've got around here artwork and i just wanted to get a piece of history was it from somebody that uh, painted it and he traded it out but now that i've taken it apart and there's an uh watercolor on the reverse side i pretty much nailed it down that that was rick's okay uh, Rebecca's got a question too. It's like, what brand of alcohol markers do you recommend? 
Hmm. Um, Markers? Yeah. Um, I, I don't. <laughs> okay. Well, that's fair enough. Thank you. <laughs> um, you know, I, I, well, it depends on what you want to do. It depends on what you're working on. Okay. For example, if I was going to switch over and use some of that in some of the little pictures that I'm drawing of animals. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, the, the thing with markers is that, A, they're not permanent. Okay. Uh, any of the colored markers you get are fugitive. Um, depending on the paper that you're working on, uh, sometimes they work better than others. Um, so I'm working on cardstock. Yeah, if you're working on cardstock or bond or whatever, it's going to suck a lot of the marker, you know, the liquid out of the marker. Right. And it's going to dry the marker out very quickly. Um, you know, there's papers specifically made for marker. And, um, you know, and the marker will go on. You'll be able to blend it. Uh, the thing with, you know, cardstock or bond paper, it's going to look streaky. Okay. Well, I'm very ha happy with what I'm using right now is colored pencils. Mm -hmm. with a little bit of markers if I do outlines. Yeah. So um, I, I have to be careful because the cardstock is not terribly thin, but then it's not too thick either. Right. And what I've noticed is, is that sometimes it bleeds through, depending right. on how hard you press down right. when you're doing something. Yeah, so what you want to do is you want to get a blotter sheet. Oh, okay. You know, uh, like a, a sacrificial piece of paper that sit under, <laughs> under your drawing so that as you're going over it with the marker, if it does soak through, it doesn't go onto your table, your drawing board, or something like that. Or the next piece of paper underneath it that you wanted to save for another picture. Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else? No. Nope. Going once, going twice. Okay. Well then, okay. guess what? We will be back here tomorrow morning about 10 o'clock, and uh, I'm gonna surprise you with what you're gonna draw, okay? Oh. oh. <laughs> Looking forward to it. What? And the, what is that, 10 to 12 then? Yes, 10, 10 o'clock to 12 o'clock, okay? Yeah. Uh, all, I, all I can tell you about tomorrow is have your pencil sharpened, okay? Sharpened, okay, I can okay. do that. Have your pencil sharpened yeah, and yeah. Have, have an eraser, okay? They are already. Yeah. And uh, and you'll be good. Okay. But we're gonna right, try to do so we're gonna try to do some longer, more detailed drawings tomorrow. Okay. Uh, can, uh, can I ask ahead of time? Is a B or an H pencil better? Uh, B. B. Okay. Yeah. The reason being H is hard, isn't it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the bees are soft, and so they're a little more responsive to how much pressure you put down, you know, as you're making a mark or a line or a tone. And so it's easier to build up a darker tone with a bee, you know, and you can still put a very light tone. You just have to, you know, be very gentle with it, you know, very light. So you can get more of a range out of a bee than you can out of an H, okay? Okay, thank you. Anybody else? No, nope, enjoyed right. it. Thanks a lot. Okay, well, thank you all for coming, and we will see you in the morning. Okay. Uh, right. Maybe I'll be in focus better. <laughs> yeah, it, it'll be it'll be Friday. Okay. So have your cup of coffee. At the end of the week. Enjoy. We made it. Did another one. Yay! Hey, Veronica, Thanks. how you doing? You've been very quiet today. I didn't even know you were there. So. Yeah. Just observing everyone's art. Oh, okay. All right. Well, hopefully we'll be seeing some of your drawings or something like that pretty soon, okay? Yeah, yeah. All right. Okay. All right. See you Have tomorrow. a good evening, everyone. You too. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.